Hey there everybody, welcome back to the Game Vault, I'm Captain Beefy, and we're going to talk about Season 1 for Diablo 4, Season of the Malignant. I'm going to give you my thoughts on it. I have beaten the mission that they've done for us there, the, uh, the main mission that they added for it. I've got my character up to level 63, I played a Necromancer, and, well, anyway, let's cue the music and we'll get right to it. All right, first off, my overall impression of Season of the Malignant is it was fun, but a little bit underwhelming. Um, you know, overall, the story was fairly short. You know, I didn't expect a monster story or anything like that, but yeah, it was fairly short, fairly predictable, nothing special there. Um, so, eh. And I think the voice acting of Cormond was probably one of the weaker performances in the game overall. He was okay, but I mean, most of the other performances are so stellar that they knock it right out of the ballpark, whereas he was just kind of like, eh, you know, he was alright. So, you know, overall, eh, on that. The gameplay itself, the addition of the Malignant Hearts sounded really cool, and until I hit World 3, they were horribly underwhelming for the most part. I mean, really bad, actually. I got a, one that I like that causes corpses... Um, to explode and corpse related skills to proc without you doing anything, without the push of a button. So it was kind of nice because it would summon my skeletons, it would summon my skeletal mages, it would proc the corpse explosion and the other one that sucks everybody in, the, the, the corpse tendrils. It would proc all those, so I had, I had to really kind of customize my build and really tune it to that heart because I found that to be kind of fun. And I was like, you know, it wasn't really what I intended to do. I wanted to go with a Bone Spear build, which I did. I, you know, I used Bone Spear as my main form of attack. Um, but I like that corpse interaction. So I went ahead and I got my... I'm going to do a video. I'm going to show you full on how I did this guy. But I went with the uh, Reaper skeletons that create corpses when they attack. I went with the... I think they're the Bone Mages that when they fire off their projectiles, they damage themselves and eventually die. But when they die, they give you a barrier. So, what was cool about that is these guys would be firing off and I'd get a little bit of a barrier and then all of a sudden, boom, they resummon and I didn't have to do anything to do it. It was just perfect. It was really well done. So, I, I, you know, I found a use for that one malignant part that I really liked. Um, the rest of them, you know, I'm just kind of trying to filter through and find ones that benefit the minions and all that and make them stronger. So, you know, it was pretty cool. The malignant tunnels were alright, you know, that's where you get most of your malignant hearts. I feel like they would have been a little more fun if they were larger, and I think a missed opportunity here that Blizzard really missed on was to make those nightmare, you know, to enable those like nightmare dungeons as well. It'd be kind of cool to go into a nightmare malignant tunnel as opposed to just a regular malignant tunnel. So if they made them a little larger and they made them nightmare quality where you could have these different um, affixes to them and you know different pluses and minuses to your character and the and the creatures you're fighting a little more dense mobs and maybe more opportunity to gather some of these malignant hearts because it is a little stingy especially early game. later on in the game you start to get more and more of them but in the beginning of the game it was real real stingy i felt like there was only one type of heart for vicious brutal and devious you know and then the ultra rare Brutal Heart, and I got one of those, I think, in the very first 20 or 30 levels of the playthrough, so it's kind of disappointing, but I didn't focus a lot on that, so, you know, that might be just how I played had an impact on that. It was kind of nice going in and having all the altars of Lilith activated, having, I think it was the first two levels of your Renown accounted for, you know, all the, the map completely opened up and all that was really cool. So gaining Renown wasn't too hard. I focused on that a lot early game. Um, in you know, especially like in the Fractured Peaks when I started off, because I was like, I'd like to get to the point where when I do get to uh, World Tier 3, I will be able to instantly get the Obels and be really close to getting the four Paragon points. So that was cool. That was fun. So, but like, 
out in the real world, they occasionally come across these malignant growths. You know, and they're kind of neat, but they don't really do much. You know, they just pop off some creatures. I would like to see more opportunities out in the world, too, to engage with these malignant creatures, find malignant hearts and all that. They just, they were really, really stingy with that. Now, looking at the actual seasonal journey. Now, there, there's a couple ways to progress through the season, depending on how you look at it. So, you go through the storyline and all that. That's one way you progress. And you could say, all right, I beat the storyline. I'm done with the season. Then you've got the seasonal journey, which shows up down, you know, down below you go into your uh, uh, your menus and all that, and you'll see it's got, I think, 80 or 90 levels to it. I'm in the 80s now. Yeah, it's got 90 levels, I think. So I'm at, like, 81 right now. So I've only got a few more left. And you get a lot of interesting stuff in there. You, you know, some of the free stuff that comes through... Uh, cosmetically is just utter garbage like that one artisan outfit looks horrible and um, it's it's goofy looking you look like I don't know look like a, a wannabe actor from the Shakespearean days or something like that you don't look like a warrior in that outfit it's stupid looking um, the cold iron stuff's kind of neat and then you've got the, um, the upgrade from that which is the I forget what it's called but the upgraded one looks really nice but both of those are cool looking I like the fact that as soon as you acquire these things, they are available in the Eternal Realm. I jumped over to my sorceress to see if when I got those cosmetics, if they were available for her right away, and they were. So that was kind of neat. Um, you know, but otherwise, you get some cool emotes. So that's kind of neat. Every weapon type and all that pretty much has a new um, look to it that you can you can get. One of the coolest things though was the smoldering ashes, right? So smoldering ashes, you can spend those throughout the season to improve certain things like the amount of XP you get. So spending one ash gets you an extra 3%, two gets you 2% on top of that, the third one gets you 2%, and the fourth one gets you 1%. So you spend four of these and you get a total of 8% on top of regular experience. Now if you compound that with a um, potion or an elixir, where you're gaining your, what is it, 5% extra, so there's 13% extra XP that you can be running around with once you get all that unlocked, which, that's not too bad, and if you're going into Nightmare Dungeons and you're bumping yourself up a few levels, you know, you get 1.5% XP per level above your level, so if you're level 50 and you're doing, you know, you're fighting level 51 creatures, you get an extra 1.5%, so that's 9.5%, if you go two levels up, that's 3%, so what are we looking at here? 8, 13, 14, you know. You can get that percentage up a little bit, but what I didn't like is you couldn't start using those smoldering ashes, or you couldn't you couldn't get them until you hit level 40. And that left you a lot of time early game that you just could not use those. And I don't know how many people are gonna go through a season and play through level 40, level 50, whatever. I think I beat the actual game itself at level 30 something yeah like level 36 when I finally beat the storyline and I felt like okay you know if I was a super casual player I might hang up the game at that point but like, alright well I beat that and I'll wait for the next season now or I'll go back to my regular character or something like that so I feel like that was a, another missed opportunity that they should have allowed us to access those ashes earlier because it might have been more fun to say oh wow look I can bump my XP up now I can see why they wouldn't because they don't want everybody jumping up to 15% extra XP or whatever from a, a low level, but what if you only allowed the first level of each ability to be upgraded at that time? That might have worked, you know, um, where you could say, uh, you could put one ash into anything at level 20, and at level 30 you could put one ash into anything, but you can't put it into something you've already done. you got to wait till you're level 40 before you can do the second level. That could have changed things up a little bit, and it also could have made people want to hold back an ash until they hit that upper level like you know I'm gonna save this one till I get to level 40 that way I can put a second one in there and maybe a third or something like that I don't know just, I'm, I don't design games obviously you know, I just talk about them and play them but that's something that I think could have worked out to be you know a little bit better so now I found it, it's it's fun though I'm having fun you know and I think at the end of the day that's the most important thing in the game is whether or not you enjoy it. Now, me personally, I enjoy it. I've enjoyed the season so far. Um, I do plan on getting to um, level 100 
on. Oh, then there's this, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. There's a whole other aspect to it. There's the there's that part on the bottom. Then there's the seasonal journey where you go through like one, two, three, four. I think seven levels of stuff to gain favor and other rewards and all that. Where you're going to gain new um, legendary aspects and cool stuff like that. So that's the third part of it. So it's kind of kind of complicated how it works. And it's a little confusing. And if you're not an ARPG player or if you're not a Diablo player, you're not used to seasonal content, you might get lost in all of this and be like, well, wait a minute, I th thought I finished this and I didn't, you know? And some of the requirements for those higher level ones to finish off are pretty steep. Reach level 100 uh, is one of them. I think you have to kill Uber Lilith at some point in time. That's not a lot of people can do that, you know? Fortunately, you don't have to do every single one of them to beat each step of that seasonal journey, those seven steps but you know but some of them they yeah they get to be a little challenging and, and like some of them i was waiting on you know I, I had everything except for these two or three and i physically couldn't do them because i wasn't on world tier three yet you know so i had to force my way on to world tier three and i got to world tier three fairly early i think i was level 62 and i kind of breezed through it with my with my build and i was shocked with that because um or no, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, I was level 6. I'm thinking something else could be. I was like level 53 or 54 to get to World Tier 3. I tried to get to World Tier 4 at 62. And I handled myself pretty good until the very end and I got smoked. So I'm going to try again at like level 64 or 5 and see if I can handle it there. Yeah, it's level 70 creatures, level 70 dungeon. It's a little more challenging, but it was fun. But yeah, like the... um. But yeah, getting through it with to World Tier 3 wasn't that tough. And once I got there, I was able to do other things like participate in Helltides and, and get things that, that were needed to advance myself a little bit. So that's that. But overall, yeah, I'm enjoying it. I plan on finishing the seasonal journey. I plan on clearing out up to level 90 on all the little gifts and all that that you get with the uh, rewards, the... the you know, all the cosmetics and all that. I want the horse armor at the end, of course, and all that goofy stuff. And it's kind of fun, just for bragging rights. You can run around and be like, here, look, I got the special horse armor because I did this. So, again, fun but underwhelming. I'm hoping Season 2 kicks it up a notch a little bit. I'd like to see... One of the things I didn't like about the seasonal journey is a lot of it was stuff you're going to do anyway as you play through the game, which is good and bad, like beat five malignant tunnels, right? Well, you're going to do that anyway as you play the game. Rewarding you for it? Okay, you know, why not? But forcing you to do certain things, too, that you might not normally do could be a little annoying, so it's, it's kind of a delicate balance there, you know? I would rather see these things tied more closely to the story. Give us a bigger, meatier story, and have that seasonal journey progress as the story progresses a little bit and tie in a little bit more of it to, you know, your progression. I think that would work a little better, make it a little more fun, a little more interesting. But again, like I said, I don't design these things, I just play them. So anyway, let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Did you enjoy season one? Um, did you get the battle pass? You know, did you buy like the ultimate edition or the premium edition and get... You know, little boosts in the battle pass and all that. And if you did, what do you think about it? Was it worth it? In the future, you plan on playing more seasons. Uh, and if you do, are you going to buy a battle pass again? Or are you just going to go with the freebie stuff? That's, you know, it's good questions to ask. And I'm interested in your thoughts on it. Anyway, thanks for listening to me talk. I'm Captain Beefy. This is the Game Vault. If you haven't done so, please leave a like on the video down below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Ring that bell for notifications. I'll see you next time. Until then, peace.